Hey, welcome back to Beard Squid. In this video, I'm going to show you a real life application of using a quadratic sequence. Now, a lot of you have asked, well, where am I going to use a quadratic sequence? What relevance does it have in real life? So in this example, I'm going to show you a real life application of quadratic sequences coming up. Let's look at the following real life problem for using quadratic sequences. Veronica and Debbie intend to beat the world record for building a house of cards. As at the 1st of January 1998, the greatest number of stories achieved in building freestanding houses of standard playing cards was 68, at a height of 3.9 meters. Now, in order to beat the world record, they would have to build a house of cards up to 69 stories. So they want to figure out how many cards they need to do that. So what we can do is we can um, draw the diagrams for the first three terms of this sequence. So a single story house of cards looks like this. You've got three cards. A double story house of cards looks like this. And a triple story house of cards looks like this. So those are my first three terms. N equals 1, N equals 2 and N equals 3. So now what we can do is we can do a table of values to find out the number of stories and the number of cards required. So let's find out for the first five stories how many cards we need. We know that for one story, there's three cards, so we can write down three. For two stories, we have eight cards. And for three stories, we have 15 cards. Now, if we carry on this pattern from three to eight to 15, we know that for four stories, we'll have 24 cards. And for five stories, we'll have 35 cards. Once we've established our sequence, we can now find the differences between consecutive terms. So for the first difference, between 3 and 8, we have 5. Between 8 and 15, we have 7. Between 15 and 24, we have 9. And between 24 and 35, we have 11. Now, what I want to do is I want to find out the second difference. So the second difference between consecutive terms, between 5 and 7, we have 2. Between 7 and 9, we have 2. And between 9 and 11, we have 2. Since the second differences are constant, we know that we have a quadratic sequence. So what we need to find the formula for this quadratic sequence is the 3, the 5, and the 2. This is the first term of my sequence. This is the first term of my first difference. And this is the first term of my second difference. Now I'm going to equal each one of these terms to a specific expression, okay? So the first one is a plus b plus c. The second one is 3a plus b. And the third one is going to be 2a. Now these you're going to use by default. You're always going to use this when trying to solve a quadratic sequence. If this is the first video that you're watching in this series, the chances are that you're not going to know where these have come from. I would suggest watch the previous video to understand why I use these expressions. And if you're not really too bothered, then just follow through with me and um, we'll go ahead and find the formula for this quadratic sequence. So take it as a rule of thumb that whenever you're finding the formula for a quadratic sequence, that you're going to be using these three expressions. So the next step is that we're going to solve each one of these expressions. We have to start at the bottom because here we have only one variable. So that's really the only equation that we can solve first. If 2a is equal to 2, in other words, 2 times a number is equal to 2, that number can only be 1. So therefore, a is equal to 1. Now, since we have the value of a, we can substitute that into the second equation to find out what the value of b is. So 3 times 1, because we know a is 1, will give me 3. 3 plus b is equal to 5. Find out the missing value of b. Therefore, the value of b is 2, because 3 times 1 is 3, plus 2 gives me 5. Now that I've worked out the values of a and b, I can substitute these values into the third equation to find out what the value of c is. A is equal to 1, B is equal to 2. So 1 plus 2 is 3, 3 plus C is equal to 3. Therefore, C must be 0. What we need to do now is use the universal general quadratic formula, which is un equals a n squared plus b n plus C. We're going to use these three constants to substitute into the general formula for any quadratic sequence. And then that's going to give us our formula for this particular sequence. So we have un is equal to 1n squared, which is n squared, plus bn, and in this case b is 2, so 2n plus c, and c is obviously 0. So we have un is equal to n squared plus 2n. This is the formula now to find any term in our sequence. So in other words, 
UN is equal to the number of cards needed or required to build a house of cards with n stories. So UN is the number of cards that we require and n is the number of stories of the house. So using this rule, how many cards will Debbie and Veronica need in order to be the world record and build a house of cards with 69 stories? So we're trying to find out how many cards they need when they build a house of cards of 69 stories. So all we're going to do is we're going to substitute the value of 69 for n. So u69 is equal to 69 squared plus 2 times 69. And I can work that out as 69 squared is 4761 plus 2 times 69 is 138. When I add those two values together, I will need 4,899 cards to build a house of cards of 69 stories. So Debbie and Veronica need 4,899 cards in order to be the world record and build a house of cards with 69 stories. So that was a quick application of using quadratic sequences to solve real life problems. As always, thank you for watching. If you found that video helpful, then drop me a like and make sure you subscribe. I'll be uploading a couple of more videos about problem solving quadratic sequences. Uh, so I'll see you in the next one.